there you can see the familiar uh, emblem for uh, the vintage Baldwin pianos and their their famous uh, Grand Prix um, decal from uh, from a couple of the um, I think almost from a World's Fair maybe. Um, in any case, uh, you're looking at a Baldwin. Uh, about six foot two inches, six foot three inches, grand. This is the predecessor to the Model L grand. Um, and I will run the serial number and get a date on this, but uh, it's going to be pre 1910, somewhere in there. Uh, this piano is being done uh, for a piano rebuilder. Uh, Sent it to us to to handle the finish work on it. Uh, it will be going in a black, be done in a uh, semi-gloss black from the original mahogany, red mahogany. What I want to show you here is uh, the pin blocks already been taken out, and this one was glued into the and mortised into the cabinet. It was not on the treble end, you can see here. Just like the Krakauer, if you take a look at the Krakauer Brothers video, I've got uh, Beaver's Piano TV channel on YouTube. You'll notice the same thing. The better makers, this is the way they tended to uh, put the pin blocks in the pianos. So you've got the three screw holes here for the pin block, and, uh, and then it's glued into this stretcher. And of course, you see the stretcher here. It's glued in there. You can see that all the way down. And then in this end, let me walk around. This end, you see it was actually buried in the cabinet. And um, I mean, it, it really makes for a pretty solid installation. And uh, you, you pretty much eliminate the the opportunity for the pin block to have any bearing, it's moving, have any bearing on the piano, losing its tuning stability. So, um, so there you have it on that. And you can look at that Krakow Brothers video and see that C1 that's installed. I mean, it's it's an original block. You can see, see how one looks before it's taken out. This piano has the damper action out. It's, I mean, it's getting everything. New action, new damper action. And uh, you see that. That's where the damper action would normally be. All that's out. Um, so this piano is about as disassembled as you can get, with the exception of removing the soundboard. Um, in any case, uh, the cabinet's in pretty good shape. Um, no loose veneer on the cabinet. Um, It's in pretty good condition, and uh, but the um, some of the parts are a little less so. Uh, see here, the lid, the large lid and the small lid here, and walk around here. And the legs. These, these are probably the worst pieces here. Not quite sure what happened here. But you can take a look here. In pretty bad shape. So uh, it's going to be a pretty good amount of time put on those. It's actually missing mold in here as well. So we end up having to fabricate some molding. Place the molding. And this piano has brass ferrule. So you have this molding here. You have a brass ferrule that fits on top of there. And those are the rest of the parts there. But uh, this is uh, this is one of those pianos. If you if you have and it has some issues like that, it's well worth getting that repaired because it's such a such a fabulous instrument once it's restored, and uh, and it's worth it. It's really worth the investment. But. Uh, you can look at some uh, progress on this. Just check back. Um, 
Beavers Piano TV channel on YouTube. Uh, questions, uh, one quick way if you have any questions or anything about something you saw or something I said. Uh, if you have a Twitter account, just go to twitter.com and uh, just at Beavers Piano. Um, another way is pianos.proboards.com. You can uh, post questions there. And it's basically a forum. It's really easy to exchange uh, dialogue there. And uh, just let me know what you think. And uh, like I said, you check back on this one. It'll be uh, a few weeks in the in the working on this one because uh, some of the issues on the legs and uh, such. But uh, just keep an eye out, and you'll see some updates on this particular piano. Thanks much.